Hey everyone, Boone here from PremiumBeat.com. So today I have a super fun tutorial for you. I'm going to show you how to create these anime style speed lines inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so I'm inside of my Adobe After Effects project. Now let's take another look at the sequence with sound included. Okay, very, very short sequence, one second in length. We hear a fart noise, the man dramatically turns to look at the baby, and the baby dramatically turns back to look at the man. And we don't know who farted, but there's a lot going on here. There's a lot of action. So let's take a closer look here. We can see we have, I'm gonna zoom out. We can see these graphical elements here. These are called speed lines. Now what these are doing are two things in particular. They're helping add that movement to the scene. You can see that there's already this snap zoom in and these lines animate in at the same time. So they're helping provide that visual movement to the shot. Also, they're drawing the attention to a specific part of the frame. You can see that when the shot is kind of complete at the end here, it's framing the baby's face. So we want to focus in on that reaction. So they not only show that movement, but they're framing a very particular part of the screen and we're not focusing on any background elements. Now let's take a closer look at how we can recreate these speed lines. So I have another composition here and this is just the clean clips without the speed lines. And I have these markers here as a visual reference and it's showing me where the animations are taking place, where these zooms are taking place. These were shot in 4K and they're being edited in a 2K sequence, which gives me the versatility to create these digital zooms. And what I want to do is I want to bring in these speed lines the same time these digital zooms are happening. So I'm going to go ahead, I lock these clips off, and now I want to turn these off and we'll start to create our shapes. So to do that, first I need some guides. So I'm going to turn on title and action safe. Then I'm going to turn on the guides. And now I'm going to bring in a guide here. And if I right click on it, I can select edit position and I'll type in 540, that'll bring it right to the middle. I'm gonna bring another one out here, edit position and type in 960. Now this edit value is a relatively new feature, so if you don't have like the latest version of After Effects, I don't know if that's gonna work for you. I'm gonna bring in another guide, put it at the bottom, and then I'm gonna make sure that these guides are locked. Okay, now I can create my first shape line. So I'm gonna go grab the pen tool, and I'm gonna zoom in, Put a point on the middle and I'm going to expand this so I can see what's going on. And now we have a new shape, shape layer that's created and I'm going to add two other points here and close it off. Now the fill is set to white. I don't have a stroke. That's fine. I'm going to grab my selection tool and make sure that this is snapped to the middle. If it's not snapping, you can go select snap to guides. And I'm going to kind of rough in these other two spots here. And don't worry about getting it perfect because you can edit these at a later time. And then I'm going to go rename these speed lines because all the lines and all the circles are going to be on this one shape layer. Okay, now let's take a closer look at the shape. If I open up the shape layer, it's important to understand what's going on here. We have contents and then we have the shape element, which is our first line. Now the shape element has its own transform properties, which are different from the transform properties of the actual shape layer. So when I reference this from now on, I'm, if I'm referencing the shape layer, I'm talking about the entire shape layer. If I'm referencing the shape element, I'm talking about this shape element and these transformation properties, which is very important to know. So now what we want to do is we want to create multiple lines based off of this line. So to do that, I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to add an animator called a repeater. So if you go over here to the right of the contents, you can see an add button. I'm gonna click on that, and here we can find repeater. I'm gonna click on repeater, and now something's happening that I do not want to happen. It added the repeater within the shape group. So I don't want that. I wanna take it outside of the group, and we'll put it here. Now I can close the shape, and I'm gonna put it underneath here. And we'll open up the repeater, and you can see that the repeater has its own transform properties. So again, very confusing. You got to keep things organized here. So what I want to do is I want to line these up. So I'm going to bring my X value from 100 to zero that will line those three up. Then I'm going to change the number of copies to 20. And then when I go to rotation, watch what happens. It's going to start to rotate these around the center. So now I'm going to change the rotation to 20. And I have my circle now. So now I'm going to turn off these guides. 
so we can see what's going on better. Okay, so now I have my circle and I'm ready to position these lines. So I'm gonna turn or close these. So to position these, I am going to go to the shape element. I'm gonna open this up. Well, first let's, let's turn on one of our layers. So let's say this is the speed lines for the man first. So I turn on the layers so we can look at the position. I'm gonna go to the end point. So I'm gonna go to the second marker. I'm gonna actually add markers to the timeline here to give me a reference so I don't have to look at the layers. These markers are matching the markers on my clip. Okay, so this will be my first speed line animation here. But first I just wanna position it. So to, to position it, we're gonna mess with a couple of these transform properties here. So I'm gonna open up the transformation properties of the individual shape element. And if I go to the Y value of the position and I bring that up, you can see that circle starts to expand. And if we wanna control the width and the length of each line, I can go to scale, turn off constrained proportions, and then if I mess with X, it's gonna affect the width of these. If I mess with Y, it's gonna make those longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and make those a little bit longer and a little bit more narrow and now those are in place so I'm gonna close this to get these lines over my face I'm gonna mess with the transform properties of the actual layer go to position position that right over my face and that's looking good um, if I want to change the width or the height of these I can go to the scale of the, this layer and start to mess with X and Y um, so I can do that just a little bit if I'd like. Okay, so that's in position. Now I wanna bring these speed lines to life. So the first thing I'll do is I'll animate these in and out. So I'm gonna animate them between marker one and marker two. So first I'll go to marker two. I'm gonna open up the shape element and the transformation properties. I'm gonna add a keyframe to position. I'm gonna go back to marker one, which is the start position. And then I'm gonna just bring that Y value up, which is gonna bring my lines off frame. And I'm gonna grab both of those keyframes, hit F9, which is gonna add easy ease. And now these smoothly come in. But if you look after they're in, they're quite boring and static. So what we can do here is we can add some more animators. So if I go up here and go back to add, you'll notice there's a couple of different options here. So first I'm gonna select wiggle paths. What wiggle paths is gonna do, it's gonna do exactly what it sounds like. It's gonna wiggle the paths of each individual line. If I ramp up the size here, you can see what's going on to changing these paths. So I'm gonna set that to maybe about 20, and then I'm gonna set wiggles per second to about 20 as well. So now all of these paths are gonna wiggle and give it kind of a more dynamic look. And to add another little punch to it, I want these to move in and out a little bit and offset. So I'm gonna add a wiggle transform, open this up, now this is gonna wiggle any attribute that you change in these transform um, properties here. So if I move the Y, when you look at the Y, all the Y uh, positions of each line start to change. So I'm gonna set that to maybe 15, and then I'll set the wiggles per second to 20. So now with the just these two animators, I've added a lot of um, spice to this and you can really customize these like for instance these are looking pretty thin right now I might want to change the width of them okay so these are done for this particular shot now what I can do is I can simply duplicate this drag my second one over and then turn on the baby reaction layer and first I'm gonna let's go over here to this shot and I'm gonna cut this one because it ends here now I'm gonna bring this one and I'm gonna open up, look at the keyframes here. Now all we gotta do is match these keyframes up to these markers. And when this comes in, those comes in, that comes in as well. And if we need to, I can simply reposition these because I might need to. And I'm, just to make them a little more dynamic, I might wanna customize some of the attributes so they're not exactly the same. Okay, so now let's take a look at what we got. Okay, so there you have it, quick and easy anime speed lines and Adobe After Effects. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Be sure to check out Premium Beat for high quality, royalty free music and sound effects for all of your media and video projects.